Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner, and welcome to a very Illinois-ish version of Mr. Lehner's math extravaganza. And today, we're going to continue to build on our unit rates and ratios by making comparisons with rate tables. For those of you that need that little organization factor in there, this might be really helpful for you. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. If I look at my rate table here on the left-hand side, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to analyze my information. So I look at, I know that I have ounces of macaroni, and I also have some cups of cheese up here. When looking at this, I notice that the chart has already given me, or my table has given me, the numbers of cups of cheese and the ounces of macaroni that I'll get for each one of the cups. I notice I'm going from 1 to 8. So I can then make a conjecture that I'm multiplying by 8. So if I was going to fill out our handy dandy little chart right here, I would say that to go from cups of cheese to ounces of macaroni, I need to multiply by 8. So 2 times 8 would be 16. 3 times 8 would be 24. 4 times 8 would be 32. 5 times 8 would be 40. And 6 times 8 would be 48. So I just completed my chart there. I looked at my cups of cheese. I looked at my ounces of macaroni. Oh, what's that? You notice something different too? You're right. I multiplied by 8, but you could also then go reverse. Flip it around. I can go from ounces of macaroni to cups of cheese. How could I go from 8 to 1? By dividing by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And so on. So you can work the table both ways, going from uh, either side. It's the reverse or inverse operation. Let's take a look at our first question. It says, well, it's kind of cut off, but it says, how many ounces of macaroni would I need for 12 cups of cheese? So imagine I drew out my chart, and I now have 12 cups of cheese. Well, I know that I was multiplying by 8. So it's the same thing as taking 12 cups of cheese, multiplying it by 8. I know that I would need... Uh, 96 ounces of macaroni if I had 12 cups of cheese. So again, I just plugged in my numbers into my chart. And I didn't have to go 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 12. I just pretended like 12 was already there. Let's take a look at another one. How many cups of cheese would you need for 80 ounces of macaroni? Well, now it's where we're going to kind of flip it and reverse it here. I'm talking about ounces of macaroni now. So if I had 80 ounces of macaroni, I know that when I went from the left side of my chart to the right side, I was dividing by 8. So 80 divided by 8 would be 10. Well, 10 what? It would lead me to believe that it's 10 cups of cheese because that's where my 10 would fall. Don't forget, when working these problems out, it's really important to know what your unit is. It's 10 what? 10 cups of cheese, 10 ounces of macaroni, $10, 10 cents, 10 miles. you got to put the unit on there so you know what you're specifically referring to. You know, it would be terrible if you went to the store and you got yourself 10 ounces of macaroni. Ooh, I really need 80 ounces here and I wouldn't have the right amount. You'd have to go back to the store and nobody wants to do that a couple times to get ingredients. So it's another example for you guys to take a look at. All right. Again, you guys already know that this is going to be the most fun part of the video. Because it's going to be your turn here. This is your rate table up here. You have ounces of cookie dough and ounces of chocolate chips. So within this chart, you're going to complete this left-hand side um, of the chart. I know, it's kind of making me uh, a little bit hungry too. Kind of feeling like a cookie monster here. I'm going to bake some cookies and eat them. But what you guys are going to do is you're going to answer these two questions as well. If I have one ounce of chocolate chips, how many ounces of cookie dough would I need? And if I have 120 ounces of cookie dough, how many ounces of chocolate chips do I have? Go ahead and grab your pencil, grab that paper, and you already know, pause the video. All right, let's break this bad boy down. So, when analyzing my chart, you may have noticed it's a little bit different than the first one. 
This isn't going by ones. It's kind of doubling here, going by twos. But I'm still going to look at my first two numbers. Think about how you can get from 2 to 12. Well, I know that I can either add 10 to it, 10 plus 2 gives you 12, or I can multiply it by 6. Either one of those ways would work. But if I try adding 10, 4 plus 10 would not give me 24, so I know I can't add 10. It doesn't work. But I said I can multiply by 6, so 2 times 6 is 12. 4 times 6 is 24. I found my operation here. 6 times 6 would be 36. 8 times 6 would be 48. Uh, 10 times 6 would be 60. And 6 times 12 would be 72. And again, you can work it backwards. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 36 divided by 6 uh, is 6. So this is the way that our chart would now look. Let's analyze our questions. If I have one ounce of chocolate chips, how many ounces of cookie dough? So when looking here, I knew that I had to multiply by six. So if I look, you know, we'll do it on this side here, and I started with one, I would have to times that by six. One times six would be six. So I know that I would need to have six ounces of cookie dough. Again, don't forget to put that unit right on your answer. Let's take a look at our second one here. If I have a 20, 120 ounces of cookie dough, how many ounces of chocolate chips do I have? So they're saying, if I have 120 on this side, I know that I can divide that by 6. So if I divide 120 ounces by 6, I know that that would leave me with 20. 20 what? 20 ounces of chocolate chips. Hopefully I didn't make you too hungry talking about this macaroni and chocolate chip cookies today. But thank you for tuning in to Miss Langer's Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.